Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Vivek. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the HVDC transmission. Why HVDC transmission is gaining so much popularity? If we see in India, a lot of projects are going on, and even in China, in various other countries, HVDC transmission is being adopted. So we will understand that what is the problem with the AC transmission because of course there is some kind of problem that is going on with the AC transmission and that's why we are going ahead with this HVDC transmission. You must have heard a lot of time that HVDC is the new technology which is being adopted by most of the countries, right? So here in this video, we will understand in detail about the HVDC transmission, how it works, what are its advantages, disadvantages. We'll understand each and every topic about HVDC in this video. Let's get started. But before we begin, consider subscribing the channel if you have visited for the first time and do hit the bell icon notification button. Now, what are we going to discuss in this video? So we are going to discuss obviously about what is HVDC. We will see a general overview about HVDC. Then uh, why it's better than AC transmission. As I said, uh, technical analysis of HVDC transmission. This is the most crucial part of this video because here we will understand the HVDC transmission and how exactly it works. Then uh, we will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of HVDC. Finally, we will move to another important topic that is the economic viability of HVDC transmission because HVDC transmission is uh, uh, not a, the general rule that you can apply everywhere. There are certain limitations that you need to look upon. And finally, then we will conclude the video. So the question comes that what is HVDC? HVDC is a transmission system. Understand when I say this transmission, right? Because there are three parts. First is generation itself. Second is transmission. And third is distribution. Okay. So HVDC deals specifically with transmission. Our generating station is at AC. Our distribution end or end of the transmission line is AC. In between the transmission of power happens through DC. Right. So HVDC is only about transmission. It is not about generation or distribution. Okay. Now, uh, okay, we have understood that uh, we are uh, concerned with transmission. But why we are concerned with transmission? The question arises. Why we are so much concerned with transmission? It is because 90% of our power systems is about controlling the transmission parameters, right? We see a lot of problems happening in uh, uh, transmission of power, like uh, you see corona losses happening, right? We see skin effect, we see uh, interference with communication lines. So all of these phenomena are happening, okay? Also fault is happening, different kind of fault is there. And the most important point is that you need synchronization in the entire system. It means it is not sufficient that your voltage at the sending end and receiving end is same. It should be in same angle. It should be at same uh, phase. It should be in, uh, you know, same frequency. So all these problems are there, right? And that's why the entire power system is so much complex because you need to match each and every parameter until and unless you do so, you cannot uh, synchronize or you cannot connect your power station to the grid right so that is very much important and that is why we are introducing dc because no such terms if i just generally talk about uh, what is the frequency of dc no frequency so absolutely no uh, question of frequency what is the phase there is no phase of dc right so no uh, uh, question of uh, matching the phase no question of matching angles all you need to do is just match the voltage, right? So if my grid is at, let's say, V grid, so my generator uh, voltage should be at V grid, right? So I have to only care about the magnitude irrespective of what is the phase, what is the frequency and all. So in, a, in one line, if I say in a nutshell, HVDC is nothing but a system to reduce the complexity of the transmission line, right? So most of our power system, as I said, is concerned about uh, uh, the transmission of the power. And by what do I mean by transmission of power? It should be economical, right? So economical transmission of power is the motto of our 
power system and that's why we have got this system called HVDC. What happens? See, this is one line diagram of HVDC. So our generation is happening here. Let's say some AC voltage is there, right? This is the symbol of transformer. So we are stepping up the voltage. Okay. We are stepping up the voltage. Then finally it is being fed to a rectifier. What does a rectifier do? It converts the AC power to DC power. And then it is transmitted over the line. This is line. And why I am showing resistance? Because you are transferring power as DC. So the only impedance is resistance. The inductance and capacitance is gone. So that is also an advantage. We have seen already so many advantages of HVDC transmission, right? So we are only dealing with the resistance. Finally, at the end of the transmission line, where it will go for distribution, again, there is a converter. Okay, so this converter is called inverter, right? So this is inverter. So first we are converting AC to DC using rectifier here. And then we are converting DC to AC using inverter. Finally, the inverter converts this to AC and it is fed to a step down transformer where it step downs the voltage and then it goes for distribution in different manner, right? So that is an overview. Now let us understand uh, that uh, when uh, we have talked so much how this idea of uh, DC transmission with AC generation and AC distribution came forward. What were the problems, right? So from the very beginning when electricity was discovered and uh, uh, you know this concept of uh, centralized generation of power and distribution to different areas came forward, the only power that was available was DC. Now, what, uh, what was the problem with DC voltage? See, DC voltage has a limitation and that limitation is that you cannot increase the voltage level. Why you cannot increase? Two reasons. First of all, this is a DC generator. Okay, I'm just dra generally drawing it. There are two brushes on both the ends and it rotates. Right, it is rotating and uh, through the commutator and brush we collect the power and this is our DC power. Now what is the problem? You cannot increase the speed of this generator as you want. Why? Because if you do so, these brushes will wear and tear. Right, these brushes will be affected. These brushes will go out of order and because of that, you this generator will be rendered useless. So there is a speed limitation over the DC generator. Why? Because the stationary part of the DC generator and the rotating part is not isolated completely, right? And this is the biggest advantage that we see in AC motor or in synchronous uh, generator, right? That the stator and the rotor is completely disconnected, at least physically disconnected. And they are linked through what? They are linked through magnetic field flux. Okay. So they are connected like this through magnetic field flux. So there is no physical connection and that's why an AC generator or an alternator can achieve greater speeds and it can generate higher voltages, right? So that is one advantage of AC over DC. Second, you will not be able to step up or step down the voltage as required. Why? Because it is a DC voltage. So you cannot connect a transformer, right? You cannot connect transformer. So that is an advantage with the AC power that even if your generator voltage is low, so you can step up the generator voltage by using the transformer. Now why I am so much concerned about higher voltage transmission? See, in DC, what is power? Power is given by P equal to VI, right? So if your voltage is not high, so what will happen? For constant power, the current will increase. So if you are, let's say, if your generator is of 10 kilowatt, consider it, okay. And uh, your voltage is 100 volt. So you will get if 100 ampere, right? Now you can understand that 100 ampere is a very huge current, right? And for passage of such a huge current, you need a wire of greater thickness. Why? Because if thickness is not high, then we know that R equal to rho L upon A. So if thickness is not high, if A is not high, the resistance will be high because if A is low, the R will be high. If R is high, what will happen? The R will be high. 
if r is high we know the i is also high and r is also high that will result into i square r loss huge loss of power right and therefore you cannot uh, send the power from one point to another economically because there will be a huge loss now even if you let's say make a thicker wire right so this is also not economically viable so there are a lot of problems with dc transmission and it was seen that uh, what was happening if let's say this is point a and this is b so you are going from a to b right so this distance couldn't be greater than 3 miles right if you are going more than 3 miles then this uh, power uh, system this will fail right this dc power used to fail so this was the problem that you uh, there was a limitation of distance and due to this what was uh, adopted that we put dc generator at every 3 miles right so that the power can be continued now you can understand a lot of problem is there first you need thick wire then you need to put uh, power generation uh, uh, capacity at every three miles or four miles so a lot of problems with dc uh, transmission right and ironically we are discussing today about the dc transmission but i am coming to that why after uh, the DC power transmission idea failed, there came the AC power transmission and it was a revolution, definitely. Today also our entire power system, most of it is AC transmission. So what was uh, the breakthrough in AC? Breakthrough was the transformer, right? Now we had transformer which could work with the AC power. Why it was working with AC power? Because there is a time varying magnetic field that is generated and it can link between the two and therefore we can link uh, two sides of the circuit without any physical connection. Therefore minimum loss and we can step up the voltage or we can step down the voltage with uh, stepping up the current right or stepping down the current in the first case and stepping up the current in the second case. So what we need to do, just generate AC power at lower voltage, right, fix the AC power, then send it to a step up transformer, it will step up the voltage, if voltage is stepped up, what is the advantage, if voltage is stepped up, therefore the current requirement will be low, if current requirement will be low, the area of cross section of the wire will be reduced, okay, if area of cross section of wire is reduced, the, the wire will be what thinner and if the wire is uh, thinner we can extend it for a longer distance all we need to do is just put few transformer in the line when it is going right to maintain the power okay so instead of putting generator at every three miles or four miles now we can only put a simple transformer and we are good to go so this is the advantage with ac transmission now what is the disadvantage now coming to the point why we suddenly went for HVDC transmission when so many things are good. So the first problem that we found was that in addition to resistance, even resistance was not a very big problem in case of AC transmission. Bigger problem was this XL and XC that is inductive reactance and capacitive reactance. So let's say if this is my, this is my AC transmission line. So this is resistance. This is inductance and this is line to earth capacitance. Okay, so this is how it goes. Right, so for if you, if you know that for longer transmission line or for any transmission line, we take a term resistance per kilometer, right, inductance per kilometer. We deal with these units. Why? Because this entire thing is repeated in the entire line. So we take this entire thing and then we find out the effective reactance, effective resistance, effective line to earth capacitance. Now because of this, what is what are the problems? First of all, R and L together, what they do? They reduce the power factor of the transmission line. Power factor is reduced. There is heat loss, power loss and line to earth, there is a current going which is known as line charging current. Okay, 
due to Faranty effect if voltage at the receiving end is less than the sending end then what happens there is a Faranty effect and there is line charging current. I have explained about Faranty effect and line charging current in one of my videos which you can uh, find in the I section in the top right corner okay and uh, there I have discussed about how line charging current is generated and how Faranty effect is bad for the transmission line okay so these problems arose not only this another problem that comes with the AC transmission is the interference with the communication lines so let's say this is my AC line okay it is taking the AC waveform something like this I'm just showing one phase and uh, there is a communication line which is carrying some uh, uh, let's say some kind of uh, communication signal in DC format okay something like this it is going okay or maybe some analog signal is going like this right now what is happening because of this AC line there is a AC field flux that is being generated in the entire line right because of the line inductance now this magnetic field flux, this time varying magnetic field flux, this can link with the nearby communication line, right? It can link with the communication line. If this linkage happens, what will happen? The signal that is going through this uh, communication line, it will be distorted. Okay. So this problem also comes up. Another problem is a skin effect. You must have heard about skin effect. What is the skin effect? Okay which results in increased resistance of the line right and uh, apart from that there is a stability problem also what is a stability problem I am coming to that okay and basically there are a lot of problems also apart from this uh, corona loss is also there right corona loss I have also made a video about corona loss you can find it in the I section so, so much complex system is the AC transmission and that's why we introduced the DC transmission. So what we are going, what we are doing here, we are basically, if you see this entire system, we are combining the best of both, right? Like we are combining the best of AC with the best of DC. So what is the advantage of AC? We can step up the voltage. So we are doing it here, right? We are doing it here. We are stepping up the voltage, generating AC voltage, stepping it up with transformer. Then we are using the transmission system as DC. Why? Because we want to mitigate the problems like XL, XC, skin effect, corona loss, right, line charging current, Faranty effect, stability of the line and general synchronization, right. General synchronization means we will only match the voltage on both the end and it will be synchronized. Okay, so that's the advantage of DC transmission. At the end of the line, why we are again converting it to AC? Because our loads, industrial loads, household loads, all are in AC. So we need AC power, right? So we again convert it using inverter. So this is the basic overview of the HVDC transmission. Now coming to the technical analysis. So see, this is the picture of uh, uh, how the entire system works, okay? The entire section, this entire section that you are seeing, this is just one section of that is the sending end side of the HVDC, right? At the receiving end, there is another such system just like this, okay, on this side. So, uh, what are the components of the HVDC transmission or the HVDC, what are the components? So, this is the generation side, okay, we are generating a uh, voltage and uh, this is AC, AC voltage generation. It is going into transformer here and here, right? Here it is being stepped up. Here also it is being stepped up. After stepping up, we are sending it to these two converters. These two are what? These two are rectifiers. And these are, these both are known as six pulse converter, right? Why six pulse? Because in one cycle, in one cycle, there is 360 degree. So it will generate this converter will generate six pulses, right? So there is a six pulse converter, which means in one cycle uh, that is from zero to 360, six pulses will be generated. And if you notice, there are two of them. Why? Because we want six plus six, 12 pulse converter, right? 12 pulse converter. Why? Because more the number of pulses, there will be less harmonics. 
So 6 plus 6, 12 pulse converter to reduce the distortion. And then uh, after converting to DC, it is being fed to DC filters, right? So there is a line inductor for holding the line current, right? Or to have a fixed line current. And then this uh, portion that you are seeing, this is DC filter, DC voltage filter to fix the DC voltage. So these two components are used for conditioning the DC power that is being generated. And here also you can see AC filters are there. AC filter is basically for controlling the harmonics in the line. There are shunt capacitor banks. Why shunt capacitor banks are there? To provide the reactive power because these converters need reactive power to operate. Right. And if uh, shunt capacitor banks are not added, it uh, the uh, reactive power will be withdrawn from the line itself and therefore the power factor of the entire system will go down. Okay. It's just like shunt wear compensation, right? So these are the basic components of an HVDC system. Now here in this picture, what you are seeing, there are two converters, right? One is at the sending end, another is at the receiving end. So there is this converter and this converter. Actually, both of these machines are same. Okay. And that's why they are collectively known as converter. Now it is based on the firing angle. You must know about firing angle. What is a firing angle? So if this is my SCR, so at a certain angle of the AC voltage, when I give a gate pulse to the gate terminal of the SCR, the SCR will begin to conduct. Okay. So by controlling this uh, firing angle alpha, okay, I can make this as rectifier and this as inverter and at the same time I can make this as rectifier and this as inverter. Okay. So it is just based on this alpha that is firing angle and this firing angle is centrally controlled by a controller circuit. Okay. It controls the firing angle of both the converters and that's why it is possible that uh, the power can be transmitted from this side to this side and also from this side to this side. And that's what exactly happens in case of AC transmission. Power is in one cycle, it is transferred from source to load and in the other cycle from load to source. Okay, so this can be done by controlling the firing angle on both the sides. Clear? Now how that happens? This I am going to show you by a basic diagram. Okay, although here what we use, we use three phase fully controlled converter. But here I am going to show you with single phase fully controlled converter because if I go into the three phase converter, it will be very complex and, and it will be out of the scope of this video. Okay. So here what you are seeing in the picture, this is the picture of a single phase fully controlled converter. So this is our AC voltage. So what happens? Let me change the ink. So in one cycle, let's say in the positive cycle, the power, the current is going from this side. And let's say if I give pulse to this first thyristor. So what will happen? It will pass through this. The current will begin to flow like this. It will go then here, then through R L load. Okay. And then it will come here and it will enter through this path. And finally it will return through this path. Okay. So this will be the path followed. This is the return path. Clear? So the current is going in this direction. Okay? And what are the thyristors I turned on? So number one, this one and this is number two. Okay. So the gate pulse has been given to this one and this one. Right? Now, in the second half, understand the current is going in this direction. In the second half, what happens? In the second half, this terminal is positive. So the current will go like this. Then it will pass through here. Then it will go through R and L. Right. It will go through R and L. Again, it is going downwards like this. And then it will go like this. And finally, it will pass through this and it will return here. So we, what are the uh, thyristors that I need to turn on? So I need to turn on this number three and this number four. Okay. So it is controlled by a controller circuit. It controls that which thyristor need to be turned on at what point of time, right? And uh, interesting point is that the direction of current remains same even though the voltage polarity changes, right? So this is the basic fundamental. Now let us see this in graph. 
Now there are two cases. I told you that this same machine can behave like a inverter and also as a rectifier. So when it will behave like a rectifier when alpha is less than 90 degree. And if alpha is greater than 90 degree, this behaves like a inverter. I am going to show you how. So this is our source voltage, okay, AC waveform. Now let's say we take a situation that is when alpha is less than 90 degrees. So therefore, so this is my firing angle here, okay. And here also, this is 90 degree, this one. So this is my firing angle here. Now let us understand that how the load voltage will go, okay, how the load voltage will follow the source voltage. So see, this is my firing angle point, okay, so from here the voltage will follow just like this AC voltage, okay, it will go like this, this is the 90 degree angle and here it will touch the 180 degree line, okay, or the 180 degree point and it will be extended up to this. Why it will be extended? Because there is a freewheeling diode. Okay, so it will be extended up to this in the negative voltage. Okay, and after that here we get the another firing angle. So it will go like this and it will again fall. Okay, so this is the locus that will be followed by the load voltage. So let me draw it. So here is my firing angle. So here it is going. Then it will follow like this. Why this voltage is going in the negative region? Because there is the freewheeling diode and the load is inductive in nature. So it's as we know what inductor does, it forces the current to flow in the same direction, it opposes the change, right. Now at this point what happens, another firing pulse is given, again the voltage will go like this. Okay, clear. So this is the resultant output of the voltage. Now let us see the current output, how the current output will look. See, so here if I plot the current, so how the current will look like and here also it will be continued, right, it will be like this and the same thing will go. How the current will be looking? So as we saw that the current flows in this direction no matter if the first and second is uh, conducting or the third and fourth is conducting, okay. So uh, because this is also an inductive load, so the current will remain almost constant okay so let's say the, the current is like something looking like this so here what happens there is a firing pulse so the current rises and then it begins to fall then another pulse is achieved and then again it begins to flow and then it goes like this so this is the waveform of the current through the load okay so the current always now see that the current is remaining in dc region only right it is not crossing zero so the current is always positive whereas what happens with the voltage the voltage goes negative for certain region and positive for a greater region right as the voltage is positive for greater region and the current is also positive therefore we can say that overall the p output is positive okay that is the average power output is positive because only just for a small amount of time the voltage is going negative and when negative voltage is multiplied to positive current there is a negative power okay there is a negative power but it is very small overall if you see the dominance of uh, positive voltage and positive current is there and therefore there will be dominance of the positive power okay and as the positive as the power is positive therefore for alpha less than 90 degree the converter that we draw here right it behaves like a rectifier okay now let us take the case when alpha greater than 90 degree in that case what happens so let's say this is our firing angle somewhere like this okay here also my firing angle is here so again what will happen so here uh, for the voltage if i draw of the voltage what will happen the voltage here it will get the firing pulse right and it will follow the just like this okay so it will follow like up to 180 degree like this then it will go forward like this and then it will come here 
the voltage is continuing in the negative region because there is a free wheeling diode and there is the inductive load which pushes the current in the same direction okay again after coming here what will happen another firing pulse will be given that is to the 3 and 4 both will be uh, getting the positive pulse so again the there will be a firing pulse like this okay and again the same thing continues again it will go like this again it will go like this and we can also draw on this side also it will be looking like this okay clear so this is there now what is interesting here you see here also the current will remain the same because the current has no effect the current is flowing in this direction so the current will be DC right so I can again draw the current the current remains positive throughout the cycle okay there is a minimum amount of fluctuation but it is absorbed by the inductive load okay now what is interesting that the negative voltage is dominant okay you can see that the voltage is negative for larger cycle okay so in this region what will be there there will be p negative right in this region for this to this there will be p positive okay so just for a very small section because here the voltage will be positive and the current is also positive here again the voltage is negative and current is positive so for this the power output will be negative okay so you can see that the negative voltage is dominant and negative voltage when multiplied with positive current what happens we get negative power output and that's why I said that alpha greater than 90 degree is the case of inverter clear so alpha greater than 90 degree is case of inverter and alpha less than 90 degree is case of rectifier I am also going to show you this mathematically so let me just take this case right what is happening this is my alpha okay this angle firing angle alpha this is 180 degree or I can say pi and this is again alpha clear so what is one cycle what is the one cycle of output voltage for my load so it starts from alpha it starts from alpha ends at pi plus alpha and which waveform it is following it is following this one vm sin omega t so what will be my average voltage it will be v average equal to 1 upon pi alpha to pi plus alpha okay i should I showed you why alpha to pi plus alpha because my conduction is going from alpha to pi plus alpha here also you can see the same thing okay so alpha to pi plus alpha vm sin omega t clear why vm sin omega t because this is the waveform followed by the output voltage for alpha to pi plus alpha so if I calculate this what I will get see 1 by pi vm and this is minus cos so changing the power this i will get cos alpha minus cos pi plus alpha right this is what i will get so finally i will get v average equal to 2 vm by pi cos alpha why because cos pi plus alpha is minus cos alpha and therefore we will get 2 vm by pi cos alpha now this equation is very much important and it is self explanatory why because we got v average right so if alpha is less than 90 degree what will be the v average so you will see that for alpha less than 90 degree v average is positive right and if alpha is greater than 90 degree what happens for more than 90 degree we know cos alpha is negative and therefore v average will be also negative so we can convert one machine as an inverter and the same machine as a rectifier by just controlling this cos alpha factor and uh, how this alpha is controlled the alpha is controlled by a control circuit so 
this is the entire thing and now you can understand that why i said that uh, these two machines are interchangeable so i can make this as rectifier this as inverter and vice versa just changing the firing angle i de derived this for a uh, uh, single phase uh, fully controlled converter this same derivation can be extended for three phase fully controlled converter now let us go to advantages of hvdc nothing new like i have already discussed there is uh, uh, you know no distance limitation due to line charging current earlier what was happening with the line th these components were increasing with the distance in the line this is line to earth capacitance this is a uh, line inductance okay so this was increasing okay and with the increase of these things there were a lot of losses so with uh, hvdc there is no inductance and no capacitance why because xl equal to j omega l omega is what 2 pi fl right 2 pi f l this is what it is now if f is 0 so that means xl is equal to 0 so no inductive reactance xc what happens 1 upon j omega c right G omega is 2 pi f again so omega is dependent upon f if f is 0 so therefore 1 upon 0 that is infinite right if this is infinite no line charging current and therefore no line to earth power loss okay so there is no line charging current line charging current if you derive you will get omega c phase p phase okay this is the equation so also here also you can see omega equal to 2 pi f f is 0 so therefore the entire line charging current is 0 so what are the other advantages second is no skin effect no skin effect right if skin effect is a big problem that comes with ac transmission no compensation required what kind of compensation voltage compensation because now our transmission is dc okay then less corona loss how i am saying less corona loss because corona loss pc is directly proportional to f plus 25 you can refer to my old video where i have described extensively about the corona loss and there i have derived this equation that how corona loss is directly proportional to frequency plus 25 if there is no frequency so pc will be now directly proportional to 25 something okay 25 something so if uh, so that means if f is not there we are reducing the corona loss right what are the other advantages less radio interference why less radio interference because now initially what was happening there was ac transmission okay there was ac transmission so this is my line there is ac transmission with ac transmission there is ac flux ac flux is time varying flux and time varying flux links with the other conductor if it links with the conductor that is carrying digital signal or analog signal so it will distort the signal now with dc what is happening if there is linear dc right if there is linear dc i'm talking about an ideal situation so there will be no time varying field now even if this is time varying okay but the magnetic field flux generated by uh, this line will not interfere with the communication line just like in case of the ac transmission line okay no stability problem now this is an important point what is the steady state stability limit p max okay so p max is given as vs vr upon x okay that is maximum power sending capability of the transmission line it is given by this equation vs vr upon x so vs is sending end voltage and vr is the receiving end voltage and x is the line reactance okay now as we are making f almost tending to zero so therefore x tends to zero and p max tends to what infinite so the power sending capability of the transmission line increases if power sending capability increases that means the stability of the transmission line is increased and if that happens if the power sending capability increases we don't need multiple conductors right and that's why only two conductors are required so there will be two arms one will be carrying the line forward and another will be a return path 
okay so only two wires required one may be there for the earthing but i am not counting it so simply there will be two transmission lines instead of ac where you see multiple transmission lines are required because uh, there are a lot of other problems right spacing is required then um, uh, you also need to uh, look for corona losses okay so various other problems are there but here only two wires are required and they can carry power equivalent to what three phase system because here we are reducing the x to zero and therefore the power sending capability of the line is increasing multifold that is the advantage of the hvdc transmission so we saw almost all the advantages of hvdc transmission and one more thing in ac we know that uh, uh, there is the concept of synchronization okay synchronization that means the voltage magnitude should be same so let's say this is v1 so v1 should be equal to vg that is grid voltage then angle v1 should be equal to angle vg right then frequency of v1 should be equal to frequency of the grid okay g means grid and v1 is let's say my generator okay and there are various other like uh, the phase sequence should be same phase sequence v1 should be equal to phase sequence of g so so many requirement now out of this we only need one and all this doesn't matter in case of hvdc transmission because there is no angle no frequency no phase okay. all we need is same magnitude okay so it is comparatively easy and less complex what are the disadvantages of hvdc transmission so the first disadvantage is that we are using many components we are using so many components like there are converter transformers two of them then you need six pulse converters dc filters and the same kind of system is required at the receiving end as well so the initial cost of hvdc transmission is very high right because you need so many components in ac the thing is simple you have a generator then uh, connect a transformer like this and then send it through the line then connect another transformer and collect it and distribute it okay so the system is simple right but here the system is complex because there are a lot of components so this is a big disadvantage in case of hvdc transmission that number one initial cost is high another disadvantage is maintenance one need to check these uh, components at uh, regular interval of time so that the power transmission is assured for all the time okay so initial cost is high maintenance cost is high and these are the disadvantages of hvdc system so because of this disadvantage now the final question comes when we should use ac transmission and when you should use hvdc transmission okay and this is the question of economic viability why because you as you saw that the initial cost is high so that means we cannot use hvdc blindly everywhere so there should be some set terms set conditions under which we are going to use hvdc transmission so here is the graph between distance versus cost of operation okay now in case of ac transmission what i have done is that i have took cost of operation to be equal to zero okay that is of course cost of operation is not zero but i have taken it to be zero that is the initial cost is zero so if this is zero you can clearly see that the cost of hvdc is higher than the ac transmission the initial cost is high now what now what is happening with distance the cost of ac transmission is increasing whereas even though the cost of operation the initial cost of operation uh, of the hvdc transmission is high but with distance you can see it pays off okay i told you already why it pays off because there is no problem of zl per kilometer right that is the line reactance and line capacitance all you need to deal, deal with just the line resistance okay then uh, there is no corona loss no uh, big cross arms required okay so none of these things required and therefore the hvdc transmission is more viable so this is the curve between cost of operation and distance this point that you are seeing this is called the break even 
point okay break even point what is break even point break even point is that point behind which ac transmission is more economically viable and uh, after break even point hv dc transmission is more economically viable so break even point is the point where ac transmission and hv dc transmission both of them have same cost of operation okay ideally this distance is 600 km okay generally speaking it is 600 km that means if the distance of transmission is less than 600 km i will be using ac transmission because that will be economically viable if the distance is more than 600 km i will be using hv dc transmission because that will be more economically viable that's why you will see that when it comes intercontinental transmission lines okay there are intercontinental transmission line let's say a line that is uh, going from all the way from uh, russia to germany okay there is a transmission line so there is a huge distance thousands of kilometers okay so in that case hv dc transmission is more viable whereas in case of uh, ac transmission we see local transmission that is happening which is less than 600 km then we use ac transmission because it is economically viable so that's all about the hv dc transmission i hope you have liked this video if you have liked the content don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already This is Vivek Chobe signing off thank you